na 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 hey 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 goodbye <laughs> Welcome in to the PHNX Suns podcast. Thank you for being here. We are brought to you by the DraftKings Sportsbook app, America's number one sportsbook app. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe wherever you get your podcast, and leave us a five-star review. You guys, <laughs> I'm shocked. Bye-bye, Bobby. <laughs> I'm like, I, is... I'm at a loss for words. I never I thought, am and I'm not. I never, I thought it was going to be a dragged out, just kicking and screaming yes. tooth like, and nail. I didn't think yeah. this would be this easy. I, I don't, well, okay, don't, okay. Don't, don't don't get me wrong. It wasn't easy. <laughs> Let's not count our billions of dollars before they've been spent by another guy that's buying the team. Right. But, uh, uh, you know, I, I thought, most of me thought it would go the way you guys thought, but I also know egotistical people cannot handle being called things and having their actions questioned and those kind of things. And sometimes immense scrutiny makes them so uncomfortable that they leave the situation. That seems to be where we are. I guess so. And I'm happy for it. I was not expecting this or at least this soon. I thought for sure we would need to have more sponsors pulling out or something like that. Mm -hmm. I thought there would need to be more public pressure, but Apparently, the public outcry, the players that spoke up, everything that we saw over the last week or so was enough to force his hand and by his own decision, which I, I would have never thought. Like Lindsay said, I thought he would be fighting tooth and nail, especially the way that he rejected the ESPN article when it first came out, the way that he failed to take ownership after the NBA's investigation came out. So I, I know that a lot of people wanted to see him forcibly removed for the things that he did and that he said. And I understand that, but at the same time, he's leaving. And I will take that as a W and move forward with it. Yeah, I I, I think that there's just a lot of factors. We'll probably find out that there's some behind the scenes story that happened as well. Would not shock me if at some point we find out players put pressure behind the scenes, mm -hmm. the NBA PA, maybe even to a certain extent, mm -hmm. and that this was your, we can make this immensely embarrassing for you and make it even worse than it seems now, and or you can choose to say you're making the choice to walk away, and, and yeah. here's your opportunity. I feel yeah. like they definitely had to be having conversations behind the scenes, like even if it was just something as simple as like, listen, man, you can't put this on us. Like, mm. don't make us be the ones to force your hand here because mm. that's completely unfair. As much as we wanted it yeah. to happen, if he didn't have this statement come out today, it was unfair mm -hmm. to ask them, the players to be the ones who have to do that. Well, and we always said that. I mean, to be frank, you know, it's it's tough to put corporations in that position too because mm -hmm. they move like cruise ships rather than speedboats. They got to have all this legal coverage, uh, you know, on things too. Uh, something happened. Some some pressure somewhere occurred that led to this uh, behind the scenes or whatever it was. I hope we find out someday. But I'm glad I'm glad whatever happened happened. As our friend Shrieker said on Twitter, we went from cancel culture to cancel culture. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to the statement here in a second. Well, let's do it. Eslo, can you read the statement for us? I know yes. I'm sure a lot of people have read it, but I do think it's important to um, dissect and break down what exactly was in it. Yes, and I will read this uh, appropriately. Uh, words that I deeply regret now overshadow nearly two decades of building organizations that brought people together and strengthened the Phoenix area through unifying power of professional men's and women's basketball. As a man of faith, I believe in atonement and the path to forgiveness. I expect that, expected that the commissioner's one-year suspension would provide me the time to focus, make amends, and remove my personal controversy from the teams that I and so many fans love. But in current unforgiving climate, it has become painfully clear that that is no longer possible, that whatever good I have done or could still do is outweighed by things I have said in the past. For those reasons, I am beginning the process of seeking buyers for the Suns and Mercury. I do not want to be a distraction to these two teams and find, and the fine people who work so hard to bring the joy and excitement of basketball to fans around the world. I want what's best for these two organizations, the players, the employees, the fans, the community, my fellow owners, the WNBA and the NBA. This is the best course of action for everyone. In the meantime, I will continue to work 
on becoming a better person and continuing to support the community community in meaningful ways. Thank you for continuing to root for the suns and Mercury and and embracing the power that sports has to bring us together. <laughs> like, listen. My first thought here was this contradicts everything we heard from Adam Silver mm -hmm. at his press conference about how Robert took accountability for his actions, that he really wants to change, that these actions were in the past, yada, yada, yada. This sounds like a man who is very disgruntled, low-key petty. Pa placing blame elsewhere mm -hmm. and refusing to take accountability for his own actions. In our current unforgiving climate. You're right. What? No, what, what's, what's unforgiving about this? You did something. You are paying the price. There are you know, things that happen when you have actions. There's consequences to those actions. Welcome to the consequences. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I, the thing that kills me is the as a man of faith part. Like I, I, I've said this last week. I firmly believe that people do deserve second chances if they're willing to atone, if they're willing to change and do better. And nothing that he did over the last year proved that he was that guy. The way that he rejected ESPN's article from the start and, and challenged the truthfulness in it. The way that when the NBA passed down its extremely lenient punishment, he was saying, well, I still dispute some of the particulars of what was in there. Like he doesn't care. Like he does not care about the people that he's hurt. He has shown no indication that he would change. And this statement just reeks of that same lack of understanding about why this is happening to him. Good riddance. Well, and you bring up the original ESPN report. They attacked the credibility mm -hmm. and the validity of the man who wrote the article mm -hmm. in those statements. Like that's not somebody that ever is going to learn. And the idea of second chances. You know when your second chance was, Mr. Sarver? It was when in 2004 somebody told you not to use the N-word anymore and you proceeded to do it multiple more times. It was in 2008 after you told a pregnant employee uh, that she babies need their mother, not their father, and that she couldn't work because she was breastfeeding. And another employee told you that that was wrong. And when they criticized you, uh, you yelled at them for questioning your judgment. That was your second chance. People get second chances in the moment and need to learn, not repeat those. That's when you don't get any more chances. And that's what today's about. Your time's up. There's no more chances. Congratulations. Enjoy your golden parachute of a billion or more dollars. And uh, and hopefully we don't have to hear from you ever again. I just wish you would have said sorry. He's not There's ever no going to say sorry. There's no apology in there. Just all. one time to the people that he harmed. I'm sorry. No, oh, this is victim blaming. Mm -hmm. This is it's it's everybody else's fault for telling people what I did. And you know what? I get it that that, that this is good, but it's also he walks away with a giant freaking pile of money. And I get yeah. that. That's America. That's business. But deep down, part of me goes. And I think you brought this up before, Lindsay. How does not at least a very small portion of that sale go to uh, paying some of these medical bills for people that had to go see psychologists who were impacted by the way he treated them? Uh, the ones in a who workspace. literally were yeah. forced out or yes. fired and lost their job, their source of income, mm -hmm. some of which completely switched career paths because of the amount of mental anguish that they had to endure under his reign. Like, yeah, there should be like a fund for them as well. You know what? I guess I guess there that's where legal action can be taken as well. And maybe Except that for the fact happen. that Arizona is really hard to do yeah. that in and the fact that the statute True. of limitations for majority of these um really egregious ones are probably that that's true. already up. Maybe some of the minority owners who are going to get a big pile of cash will do the right thing too. Maybe. Right? But because that was something that really pissed me off throughout this whole thing. Everyone's like, oh, these employees are going to get a fat stack of money. Like, no, sir and or ma'am. Stop it. From yeah. whom? Right? <laughs> From where? And how? From, yeah. Like, mm, anyway, I digress. Um, any other thoughts? Any other things that stood out to you from this statement? 
no. I, I, we knew, we just knew that if Sarver was going to go out, he would have to get his last jabs in. We knew, we knew something like this was coming if this moment was ever going to arrive, and he didn't let us down in that regard, yeah. even though he continues to let people down. So I, I wasn't surprised by it at all, but it was just like, man, go away. Like, like you said, hopefully this is the last that we have to hear from him. It will take a while to find a buyer and whatnot, but hopefully this is the last time he gets to use the Suns as a mouthpiece or something like that. Mm -hmm. For me, today is a day where faith in people and, and the right thing happening is rewarded mm -hmm. in some ways. I mean, through a lot of this, for people that have been in that building, uh, who experienced it for multiple years, for people who have reported on it and been called all sorts of names and whatnot, this is a day where you look and you go, the person who perpetrated some pretty shitty things is actually being held responsible for his actions and that is being forced out of being able to continue to do those things to people. The NBA didn't do it uh, in their initial statement, but pressure from people, from companies, from uh, media continuing to not let the story die, from the players Today's a day where you can feel like my faith in people is rewarded a small bit. Mm -hmm. And I'm and I think that is a feeling I've heard it from multiple former employees. Uh, I, I won't lie. I felt it myself. Mm -hmm. uh, it's nice that at least in a small way, faith is rewarding people. I, I, I agree with that. And I also think it's an indication of how far we still have to go as well, mm -hmm. because we've talked about this all last week. The NBA completely failed in terms mm -hmm. of holding him accountable. Um, and it, the onus was on the players, on the sponsors like PayPal, who spoke up and, and held out the money to hurt him, hit him where it hurts. Um, I, I do think it's an indication of how much further we have to go just in general and within the organization itself, because there are still a lot of people over there who were a part of this culture that need to be held accountable. 100%. And whoever is coming in will need to clean house in some regards as far as those people are concerned. I still think those people should resign. Agreed. Right now, uh, effective immediately, uh, because, you know, they're still in positions that some retaliation could happen knowing that you're on the way out uh, because it's – that will happen. New ownership will clean out any higher management that was there that uh, was, uh, you know, part of this, uh, starting at the top with the president and moving down through senior VPs. So, uh, you know, get your moving boxes ready because you shouldn't be too comfortable in those offices over at 201 East Jefferson. That's the one thing that I do hope we see come from this, um, because in the initial statement from the NBA, it said most it was very clearly most of the people who were also a part of the findings as far as these atrocious behaviors, the mm -hmm. um, enabling of this type of environment and the toxicity over there are gone. But notice how they didn't say all of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because there, there are still people who remain in that organization who were a huge part of this. And they also need to be held accountable for their actions. I know that this investigation and um, the punishment that was handed out by the league mainly focused on Robert Sarver. But I can guarantee you that they found more people over there, former and current, who were also in the wrong in a lot of these situations. Mm -hmm. And those people, like you said, Espo, you need to resign. You need to say you're sorry as well and try to make amends with the people that you harmed Yep. as a leader in that building. As a human being, that's the bare minimum you can do at this point. And in fact, I'll pay for your moving boxes if you want to do it today. That's how serious I am about it. Get out. You've hurt people. You, you perpetuated a, tox a toxic culture and you shouldn't skate either. I hope that's the case, but as we've seen so many times in the past, the trash rarely takes itself out. So that's, we'll see. that's true. very true. Um, let's take a look at some of the reactions from around the league and the fan base. We have quite a few super chats and comments from all of you guys. Thank you so much. We appreciate you being here with us today. Kyle T with a super chat said, it's a beautiful day. Cheers. Uh, Psycho Blue with a super chat saying the song that we sang at the top <laughs> of the show. 
Uh, get this guy out of here. The sun is shining. Basketball Cthulhu roar, roars in triumph. Uh, hashtag by Sarver. Our very own Shane Diefenbach gave us a super chat. Said, here's my contribution to buy the team. Shane, you, save, Shane, save that money. We got something coming up for you. <laughs> Brian with a super chat said, um, let's see. I need to have more ownership in Jesse. Hashtag price is right rules. <laughs> let's see. Book Sunwalker, thank you for your super chat. Um, let me read this before I read it out loud. You can read it. Now that Sarver is out, I want PHNX Sports to continue uh, with honor into the new ownership era. Also, I'm requesting Espo to shout, the Phoenix Suns are moving into a new basketball era. Suck it, Sarver. Go, go, Espo, go. The Phoenix Suns are moving into a new basketball era. Suck it, Sarver. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> was, your best well one worth, yet. That was well worth <laughs> 20 good, bucks. Yeah. Best one worth. Uh, thank you guys again. We appreciate all those super chats and we appreciate all your comments and your likes. If you haven't hit the like button, make sure you do that because it helps it out, uh, us out a lot. Also, we did get some reactions on social media, of course. There was a guy, a Suns fan, who mm -hmm. ran down <laughs> to the arena this morning when he mm -hmm. heard the news. Like, we, I think we have the video. Mm -hmm. Popping bottles. He obviously from the footprint center. He obviously ran over to fries across the street because he takes it out of the grocery bag. <laughs> but I like the effort. Do we do we have the the video to showcase this? What do you got? I need a pop a bottle, baby. He's gone. Let's go. We're waiting for this for so long. The reason why Tim Don even bet on the first place is because of David Stern. Didn't like Cyber. No one likes Sarver. Let's go, baby. Oh, continues so long because he can't get the bottle open. <laughs> uh, thank you to ABC15, one of their reporters, uh, with that video. So uh, That's great. So, yeah. Literally popping bottles at the arena. <laughs> yep. We also got um, some tweets from some NBA athletes and former athletes. Of course, LeBron James uh, tweeted out, Proud to be a part of a league committed to progress. Um, and he, quote, tweeted Sham Sharania, the re initial report saying that Sarver is intending to sell the team. Mm -hmm. LeBron James was the first domino in this whole thing. So mm -hmm. I applaud him for being vocal. I know he was a part of the conversations behind the scenes. Um, you can't tell me otherwise. I have no confirmation on that, but I wholeheartedly believe that he was a part of that. He is definitely somebody who um, is not afraid to use his voice. No, and I kind of wonder if Draymond kind of tipped the hat at what was going on when he said players might not play in that building. Mm -hmm. Like, did the did the Players Association say something like that? Did led by LeBron and Chris Paul that you can keep owning it, but we refuse to play in the building if you're still around? Like, it's, I'm telling you, something will come out about how this hand was forced. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm looking forward to hearing from, I know that we wanted to hear from them in advance. And I think with this Sarver announcement today, we definitely would have liked to hear from them in advance. But I am curious to hear what the Suns have to say at Media Day now mm -hmm. about what might have gone on behind the scenes if there was anything. Yeah. Marcin Gortat quote tweeted Gerald's tweet of the statement with good exclamation point. And you'll remember he played for the Suns back in the day. A, so he a had vocal. first hand um, yes. <laughs> interactions there. Mm -hmm. A vocal former Phoenix Suns. Yes. So that does not <laughs> that was a that was a less than I I think I probably expected on that tweet. So. Which says a lot. Yes. Right. <laughs> right. It says a lot. Uh Jamal Crawford uh, also chimed in with a quote, had to happen. Uh, he, quote, tweeted the Shams tweet as well, which you'll remember Jamal Crawford was also one of the very first athletes to share his thoughts publicly on social media. So uh, shout out to Jamal as well for being vocal throughout this whole process. Yeah, also former Phoenix Sun. Mm -hmm. so. And it, it, it is interesting because you have a former Phoenix Sun from much, lo much, much longer ago mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. one from more recent years, both of whom seem to share the same feelings about yes. the situation, mm -hmm. which if you want to speculate or go down the rabbit hole, you could say maybe it's because nothing has changed, Yeah, which speaks to everything we said at the top of the show about how it doesn't feel like there's any accountability being taken and there has been no genuine learning throughout yep. this whole process, mm -hmm. even to this point of essentially in a, 
in some sort of a way being forced to sell the team, you still have not understood mm -hmm. why. I never likely will. No. And I guarantee you probably all of these former players have at least one weird or off-color Robert Sommer I've, story. I've heard many of said stories, and yes, <laughs> there, there are many of them. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, just shout out to everybody who has come out publicly throughout this process. Chris Paul, of course, Draymond Green, um, and many others around and adjacent to the league who helped um, kind of make sure this thing didn't get swept under the rug mm -hmm. and was, was in the limelight for as long as it needed to be. Yeah, absolutely. And to all the Suns fans and everybody mm -hmm. else who yes, spoke up because absolutely. this is everybody's victory in terms of this thing snowballing and the yeah. public outcry and that public pressure on him, on everyone involved in this process to do what's right. Um, that that's a huge victory for everybody that spoke up. Yeah. You had, you had a voice and you used it well, fans. Uh, this day is a, as much about you as, a, as anything. So, mm -hmm. and when, when he actually sells the inks dry, we have a new owner. We'll go out to four peaks. Right. I'll buy everybody the first <laughs> round mm -hmm. and we'll have, a, we'll have a good old time. But you don't have to wait until that happens. You can head on out to four peaks because Bob's out, Herm's out. Come hang out. <laughs> Bottles are out. Yeah. At Four Peaks this Saturday. Uh, we're going to have an ASU tailgate, and it, it's going to be a lot of fun. Right now, you guys can get tickets for $50, and that ticket will get you access to all-you-can-eat buffet. Now, this buffet is loaded. It's got chicken wings. It's got nachos, pizza, barbecue grilled chicken sandwiches, pulled pork barbecue sandwiches, also dessert. Pumpkin Porter cheesecake, oh, donut yeah. holes, plus you get two Four Peaks beers, a free ride to the stadium, and you get to hang out with the PHNX Sun Devil guys. Come and, on. It's and a pretty Espo. great deal. And Espo. I'll be there. Come on. I'll, I'll be there as well. You guys can serve them some L's um, and cornhole, Jenga. I, I didn't want to cut her off. I'll be there too. Book, who is this guy? Did we rehire Bookman, him again? Bookman hasn't been rehired. <laughs> There's only three mics here. Hey, uh, listen, this is the biggest one, right? The first 15 people to sign up will receive a ticket to the game and a PHNX membership. Mm -hmm. So $50 is getting you all of the goodies that I just listed, plus a ticket and a PHNX membership. You guys literally cannot find a deal better than that. So the next 15 people to sign up will receive that. It's literally a $150 value for $50. So check the link in our show notes. We also dropped it in the chat. Just a reminder, you do have to be 21 years or older to drink Four Peaks beer, and we ask that you enjoy responsibly. Also, I want to tell you guys about the easiest and most fun way to spice up your football season. Do you want to know what it is? What's that? It's the underdog fantasy and their pick em game. Oh, okay. hell yeah. Espo, do you have like five grand riding or did you win it? Screw you, Adam Wainwright and the, oh, and the Cardinals. No. I I hit four legs. I oh. I needed Adam Wainwright to come out of the game. He was right around the pitch count. He had gone five innings, given up five runs. They were down five nothing. If they pulled him, I win 5,000 bucks. That's brutal. Screw you, St. Louis Cardinals. That is Screw brutal. you. That sucks. Yeah, it I'm did. Sorry. It did suck as I was losing 106 to 13 in our Madden league as well. Oh my God! What? Yeah, that wasn't NBA 2K. <laughs> that was Madden. It was a rough <laughs> night. Thank you very much. But did Shane you... said you should have used the insurance feature. I should have. You should have. If I would, I would have won half that money. And uh, thanks, Shane, for making it hurt even more. Well, <laughs> lesson learned. But here's how it works: you just look for your favorite or your least favorite player's stats. You pick between two and five players for your pick em entry, and whether you think they'll end up with a higher or lower total than that stat in this week's game. If you get all your picks right, you can win up to 20 times your money in a single night. Also, they do have an insurance option that you can add on there, the one that Shane mentioned, which uh, I highly recommend at least taking a peek at to make sure you get some of your money back if in I case could, you end up like an Espo. If I could go back 24 hours, I'd click the little thing because I didn't. <laughs> you can search in the App Store or click the link in the show notes. Make sure you sign up with the code PHNX. An underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's Underdog Fantasy, promo code PHNX, and get in on the action today. So I know everyone in the comments has been like, it's not over until a sale is official. Mm-hmm. 
are people going to actually want to want are they going to be wanting to buy the suns what does this all look like mm. is the devil you know work better than the devil you don't like all these kinds of things okay so let's talk a little bit about that mm. first we'll start with this tweet from Woj. He said the Suns are considered an extremely desirable franchise in the marketplace and will have no shortage of high-level ownership candidates. As a warm weather destination in the West, league executive executives always believed this could be a monster free agent destination with right ownership. This is interesting because it does kind of seem to imply that part of the reason Phoenix has never really been a free agent destination is because of Sarver. That's not a shock. <laughs> no. Some of the things that were said in free agent meetings does not shock me that no. it was not a destination in that time. <laughs> well, especially when you when you consider players that have come out publicly mm -hmm. and players that people have heard from privately across multiple years of Sarver's ownership of the Phoenix Suns, does it surprise you if we're hearing it, mm -hmm. you know players are hearing it? I've never told this, and I don't remember if I have the right to, but I'm going to anyways. Mm -hmm. Just Re remember, remember LaMarcus Aldridge? Mm -hmm. Remember how it felt like it was going to be a done deal? Mm -hmm. LaMarcus wanted to be here. His agent said, I will never let you sign with a Robert Sarver-owned team. Really? Wow. Well then. I guess that's one of probably many stories that we could unearth. I mean, I go ahead. No, I, go ahead. I you you've heard it for years now. Just subtle drops, subtle hints of people talking about mm -hmm. why they wanted to leave or why they bashed the Suns. Mm -hmm. And we have, let's be honest. There's been parts of time. There's been times where we have been mad at those people mm -hmm. for bashing our favorite team. Well, maybe we owe them an apology as well for being upset with the words that they have said when they were just trying to shed some light on things behind the scenes that were really bad. That's fair. Yeah, it's entirely possible because I i mean, it doesn't make sense that the Suns have never been a free agency destination otherwise. Like Phoenix is a growing, huge city. There's tons to do here. Great weather aside from the three months where it's blistering And they're all outside. gone during that time anyway. Right. Unfortunately, like, that's when free agency is, though. That's like... It's fine. Get them in an air-conditioned room. <laughs> it's fine. But, like, it's never made sense that this has not been a more attractive place for free agents mm -hmm. aside from that very obvious underlying fact that even Woj is acknowledging and league executives <laughs> the are The quiet things are being said. <laughs> yes, the quiet part is being said out loud now. <laughs> In a good way, finally. But I am glad to hear, obviously, well, I mean, this is no surprise, really. No sh no shortage of high-level ownership candidates. Mm -hmm. Do you think the NBA has a hand in this as far as who? Yeah, well, the NBA has to approve whoever becomes okay. right. owner. So they'll definitely be taking it. This isn't going to be, hey, you don't like me? Well, I'm going to go sell this to somebody worse. And there's other people that are afraid, well, what if he sells it to a group that wants to move it? The NBA is not going to allow him to sell it yeah. to a group that wants to move it twofold. They don't want to lose the Phoenix market, but they also have Vegas and Seattle on their radar for expansion, and they're not going to let somebody buy a team to move it to one of those markets. So put that to rest. Nobody's moving this team. The league's not going to allow that as part of this process. And wouldn't doesn't the league have to approve that anyway? Yes, the league so. has to approve every step of this. So there, this isn't going to be a scroogey. You're not going to get screwed in this whole thing because uh, because Sarver tries to pull a fast one. Mm -hmm. The disgraced isn't going to control this outside of I like that number they're offering. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how much is it going to cost? Let's do lots of money. A little ballpark number here. As of October 2021, Forbes had the Suns valued at $1.8 billion. Mm -hmm. Sportico has them valued at $1.92 billion. Both of them have the Suns ranked 18th in value across the league. Now, we don't know. Sportico didn't have a date as far as that valuation, so it could be higher at this point in time. Because we know Forbes was in 2021. We get two two plus billion dollars we could be looking at here. I'm, I'm going to guess three, three billion. Three billion? Three? Yes. You think because it'll be a bidding war? It's a desirable market. 
There's a limited quantity of teams that become available. There's lots of rich guys and, and, and people out there that are, are looking to get into something like this. Uh, I think this goes north, north of, of three is what we'll look at here. Because the Clippers were, they went for two bill and I don't think they were valuated at that price when they sold. No. So it's going to be higher. I think I was, I'd say like 2.5, but three might not surprise me either because of their upward trajectory. They've got stars here. Like this is a, like Woj said, this is a desirable free agency destination under the right ownership. So there is a part of this that comes into play here. Robert Sarver and Gamble mentioned this on Twitter. I'll give him credit, but Robert Sarver only owns 35%. Mm -hmm. So it's not clear whether he's selling simply his 35% majority stake in the club or if this will be a complete buyout of the entire entity of the Phoenix Suns. So we're we're yet to see uh, what that will be because that'll obviously, if it's only his 35%, it's not going to be $3 billion. That's, right, but, right. but it would be thirty five percent of whatever the the valuation right. is. Mm-hmm. So, but even if he s- it just sells his thirty five percent, that person comes in with the controlling interest at that point. That's so. the managing partner. Yeah, sure. So that that is interesting because a lot of people are asking us what that kind of looks like. Is it just Sarver? Is everyone selling? How does this kind of work? And um, off the top of my head, anyway, I don't know. But maybe that's something that we can look into and dig around and talk to some people about what that could kind of look like or different scenarios that we could see come from that. Mm -hmm. I I would think, though, the NBA would allow some of the minority owners to retain their... Yeah, I, it's just going to depend. Some of these people may just want to cash out as well. The same Garvins of the world that have tied their their boat to Sarver, Mm -hmm. you know, the people that... Let's be honest, the the people, what was it? The ten minority owners that signed that letter in support of Sarver. Mm-hmm. Uh, it would not shock me if it's a if it's a group, uh, uh, you know, sale that it's not just going to be be Sarver at this point. Which imagine hitching your horse to that wagon. Good lord! But. Yeah, well, there were a lot of people over there that did. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so let's take a look at some potential buyers sure. based on expressed interest in the past. So we know Bob Iger has come out and said that he would be interested. Phil Knight, obviously, John Najafi, um, even though in his statement he said he had no interest in being the managing partner. I wonder if that has changed at all in the last like five days since I, his statement. I don't know if it, if it necessarily changed, but I, he may be part of <clears throat> a future ownership group. He may, you know back one group that wants him Mm -hmm. because that is a large amount of money for a guy that is willing to kind of just stay in the background and and be a part owner in something. Bob Iger, uh, there was expressed interest back uh, last November in a a piece that AZ Central wrote uh, that he wants to get in, wants to uh, own the Suns in particular. Uh, His net worth isn't huge. Uh, I think it's 700 million 800 million so he'd have to be part of a group Mm -hmm. to purchase it uh phil knight earlier this year made an offer i think it was upwards of two billion for the the portland trailblazers and they declined but everything we've heard is he very much wants in on nba ownership so you assume he'd be there like you mentioned najafi he has 3.5 billion he's got a lot of money so burning a hole in that pocket so it would not be surprising if he's part of some group that tries to uh, get the controlling share of the team as well. And these are just people that have been tied to the mm-hmm. team in some potential way or been tied to the NBA as um, w- wanting to own a franchise. That's not to say that somebody couldn't come out of the woodworks mm-hmm. and just completely blow us away and come out of left field and we had no idea this person was interested in owning an NBA team. I, I do know the fact that there are very limited number of NBA teams and NBA teams that are available for purchase. There's probably quite a few people um, mm-hmm. lining up at the door willing to throw their name in the hat. I have one that I think should. Who? 
us the Phoenix Suns fans. <laughs> and to that extent, I've started the GoFundMe page by the Phoenix Suns from the disgraced. We are looking to raise $1 billion to be part of an ownership group. This is real. We're going to put the link in the chat right now. You can go to this GoFundMe and pledge in it. And anything that we get short of a billion dollars, <laughs> we are going to donate to the Time's Up Foundation. That is money to help women and other people who have been harassed sexually or otherwise in the workplace. So if we don't hit that billion and buy the team, we're at least helping a good cause. So get out there, <laughs> go to GoFundMe slash buy dash the dash Phoenix Suns dash from <laughs> dash the dash disgraced and get your money. <laughs> It'll put your money where your mouth is right now and become part of uh, the ownership group or somebody doing something to help against workplace discrimination. Fantastic. We can do it, y'all. Oh, we can. Oh, we're going to keep updating you. It's got, let's get this money and let's do something good with it one way or another. We will make this world a better place, either by owning the team or by helping people out. So let's do it. Go to the GoFundMe page. <laughs> Hell yeah. And it'll be on our Twitter later as well. Absolutely yes. fantastic. Um, also, super chat from Colin. Colin, thank you so much for your super chat. They said... I don't think we'll be able to fully appreciate until later what a turning point this will be for our team. It's a new era for Suns basketball. I I kind of ag tend to agree with that because, you know, regardless of who comes in and is the managing partner of this team and owns it, you know that a lot of eyes are going to be on you. Yep. You're going to be under a, um, a magnifying glass. Mm -hmm. Very much so. And I would hope that you... If you had issues in your past or currently, you would learn from the mistakes of those around you and you would create an environment that is healthy, that is safe and just overall like good mm -hmm. for the people that you employ mm -hmm. from the players to the front office to the business side of things. Every single person in that building should be treated with respect and should at least semi look forward to coming to work every day. Cause mm -hmm. when you really break this down, like sports are great as far as, you know, they provide an escape for so many people who don't have an escape in their normal everyday life. Right. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're going through a tough time. Sports can provide that to you. It should be fun to work in sports. Yes. At the very least, it should be enjoyable most of the time to mm -hmm. work in mm -hmm. sports. It's hard work, I get that, but you shouldn't dread going into your job every single day. Like, Agreed. so fingers crossed, I'm, I've got faith that hopefully things will change when a new owner comes in and hopefully they will have higher standards, not only for themselves, but the people that they, um, put into executive positions over there. I think they might already have their future president in the building. I think Morgan Cato would be a great, mm -hmm. uh, a great potential advocate for people in that building, both uh, you know, on the business side in particular, but a voice in the basketball operations as well. I, you know, I think she definitely is somebody as this process goes on uh, that I hope has a voice in that organization. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Real quick, in case y'all are happy or tired about this whole situation, we've got the thing for you. OG's Brands, our friends over there did something that is totally going to change the game. They just launched their brand new Sleep Edition gummy, and you won't want to sleep on these. But um, So they also, you know, they've got their classic OG's Brands where you could get a little party going on if you'd like to mm -hmm. celebrate that way or if you're just like partied out for the day and you need a good night's rest to come back refreshed tomorrow these are what you need to get your hands on so OG's is now flavoring dreams with a two to one THC CBN ratio gummy and CBN is a compound that helps specifically with falling and staying asleep huge fan of this and this sleep edition gummy is in their new aqua berry flavor so we went um, over to the OG's headquarters yesterday after the show. And I got to try the aqua berry flavor. And it is bomb, you guys. Yeah. It might be better than the orange creamsicle. Oh, man. I don't know. This, it's like 1A, <laughs> 1B, depending on the day. But it was really good. Okay. Well, that's all I'm saying. Right. 
you know, this is for those people that don't watch ASU football. That helps you fall asleep fast enough. Aww. So we're glad that there's another option. So I know I'm not hearing this so from a U of A football so fan. I know two I'm not and one, baby. Well, two and one. Congrats, who have you saying. played? We <laughs> highly recommend you check out OGs online at ogsbrands.com. You can find them on Instagram at ogsbrands, and you can also find their products at your local dispensary. But you must be 21 years or older to purchase. Uh, Another really cool thing mm -hmm. that's happening right now on the interwebs. What's Game that? Time. Yes. Burp, burp, burp. Yep. Game Time is the hottest new ticketing site that makes it easier than ever to score the best deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows. So if you want to celebrate by treating yourself to a night out on the town, mm -hmm. Game Time has got you guys covered because you can save up to 60% on tickets when you buy last minute. So when something pops off like today and you're just like, you know what? It's Wednesday. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling great. I need to go out. I need to celebrate. There you go. Last minute deal, 60% off, up to 60% off when you buy your tickets last minute. It's really great for procrastinators as well mm -hmm. or people right. who are just really spontaneous. If you're the Lindsay Smith of your group, you can get <laughs> tickets whenever you need. Yes. If you love PHNX, PHNX, then you'll love game time. And the best way to support us is by buying your tickets through the link in the description. So check that out if you guys want to uh, get some tickets and go out and celebrate tonight or this weekend even. It could be something fun to do. I got a big update. What What's is that? it? Ladies and gentlemen, we are $5 closer hey to yo. owning the yeah. Phoenix Suns. Kyle Tapia, thank you for your $5 <laughs> donation. Let's get there. Let's do and it. We have uh, nine, I don't even know. I'm not even going to try to say nine hundred nine $999 billion <laughs> left to go uh, or whatever. I'm not even going to try to do the math, but $5 closer. So we let's get there. We are almost there. Let's get there. Let's go. You know who I think should own this team? Who's that? I don't think they should buy it. I think Sarver should just give it to them. Who's that? Diana Taurasi. Oh, <laughs> I thought you meant us. No, I think Sarver should just take his L and give Diana Taurasi his um, shares of this The team. true goat. Yes. I'll eat this chair if that ever happens. I mean. Live on air. I would record you doing that if oh, that no. ever happens. I'll sit here and do it live on air until the whole thing's gone. I don't care <laughs> if it takes a week. I mean, we named this studio after DT. So I don't know. I'm just, I'm not mad at it. And she has expressed that she wants to, um, she's got interest in owning a team on, at some point in time mm -hmm. in her next phase of her career. So. We get her, LeBron, Barkley. CP3, when he retires, can return some of the money. Can we just have one team? It's just Phoenix is just one team that is owned entirely by former athletes. Yeah. I mean, that would be interesting. Devin's got a quarter of a billion dollars now. Can we get him in on it too? I mean, player you know. owner Devin Booker. <laughs> From office goats to actual goats. Yes. There you go. Yes. We're improving in the world. That could be the hashtag. <laughs> These ones won't crap in your office. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Any final thoughts, you guys, on all of the news that we received today? There's a lot more to come. There's a lot more to be done. I am curious to hear from a lot of the sponsors and partners that did not speak up during the time when they had their chance. I'm interested to hear what the players, Monty and James Jones, have to say on Monday. But obviously, this is a really happy day. This is great news. Um, like I said at the top of the show, I know a lot of people wanted him forcibly removed, but him stepping down on his own is still a W. And in a lot of ways, it does kind of feel like twisting the knife for that stubborn of a man to have to be forced his way out. I, I, I think you guys should all be ecstatic. Suns fans, you should be proud of yourselves for speaking up and for playing a part in all of this public pressure that was put on him. Yeah, and look, let's enjoy some Suns basketball. We don't have to have some moral dilemma in watching the Suns and enjoying basketball this season because of today and that's a good thing so we're a handful of days away from media day handful of days away from preseason let's enjoy some damn basketball guys we have breaking news what's that saul bookman has entered the chat he put on the headsets he's got something to say what's up saul uh, i agree with espo about how we should celebrate the fact that we can probably cheer for this team no matter what. I do want to reemphasize that there are still some awful people in that organization. Yes. You guys mentioned it earlier. Mm -hmm. I don't ever want to let those guys, girls, whoever that was responsible for some of the awful toxicity in that organization to be let off the hook. Okay. Like, mm -hmm. Suns fans have done a great job. There's still some awful people that are still residing in that organization that need to go. So 
Uh, I'll be back starting tomorrow, guys. <laughs> yeah. The rehiring, it's on. <laughs> have you have you donated to uh, try to buy the team? Have you put your cash in on our GoFundMe yet? Uh, I have not because uh, dreaming is free, and I'll keep it that way. Hey, it's <laughs> going to a good cause. All right, go check it out. <laughs> Saul Bookman, everybody. Uh, shout out to Saul for making sure his voice was also heard here on this show, and I feel the same way. Um, I know we had mentioned it multiple times on this show, but... Uh, we can't we can't let that also get swept under the rug. I know that this is a win, um, but it's not completely done mm -hmm. yet. We still have a long way to go. And those people who are over there currently and the people who used to be over there who were harmed still deserve um, our thoughts and us to continue to voice those mm -hmm. thoughts out loud. And they deserve um, apologies. They deserve to see these people be held accountable they deserve vindication yeah. mm -hmm. for being brave enough to stand up and say this isn't right. Right. Absolutely. Exactly. Well, thank you guys for joining us. I'm glad we were able to have a fun show today with some good news. Also, um, sit in these really comfortable chairs. Shout out to our friends over at More Furnitures for hooking us up with these comfy chairs, all the furniture for our new office space and our studios here. If you guys are looking to spruce up your home right now is a great time to do so because More Furniture is having a fall sale. To check that out, head on over to morefurniture.com. That's M-O-R furniture.com. We appreciate all of you for being here, for continuing to have conversations with us, for sharing your thoughts and opinions with us. We will see you tomorrow at 2 p.m. normal time. Same place right here on our YouTube channel. If you can't join us live, don't worry. You can always catch us wherever you listen to your podcast. Just make sure you rate, review, and subscribe. Until then, you can follow me on Twitter at Lindsay Smith AZ. You can follow Gerald at Gerald Borgay. You can follow Saul at Saul underscore Bookman. And you can follow Espo at Espo. Espo, take us home. The Phoenix Suns are in a new era of basketball in Phoenix. Hey, yo, Suck it, Sarver. Ahoy, hoy. <laughs> Never gonna let go. PHNX though, Lindsey Gerald Espo. Saw him pass the ball, we here to turn up the tempo. Got to understand me, I'll always rep the family. Rally in the valley like Dan G, 